Well, as you can probably hear, it's a little bit breezy today. Apparently, there's a storm coming. So I've popped up to Woodland, some beach woodland at the side of the A614. We're one of these. I want some leaf litter. I'm after some leaf litter, but once again, I'm on the trail of juvenile Platybunus pintorum. This was the site of 104 adult Platybunus pintorum earlier this year, in 2021. And I'd just like to see the juveniles to photograph them. But who knows what else will turn up. Maybe we'll get a whole scorpion. It's the one good thing about sampling leaf litter. You haven't got a clue what you're going to get. So that's some from there, so we'll, we'll try some from somewhere else. Sometimes sampling under something that provides some cover, like this old dubious looking carrier bag, is worthwhile because obviously the leaf litter underneath is drier. I did sample from here recently and it turned up a second or third Nottingham Sonic for the millipede Cordum Proxima and I'll drop a photo in here well I'll just grab some more leaf litter That should do us. Time to head home. And so now we're at home, out of the wind and rain. There's a glass of whiskey at the side of me. And I can start and sort through today's carrier bag of leaf litter. So much easier to do in the comfort of your own home, especially this time of year. Because if you get your sample on a tray and under a bright light such as this, it tends to warm things and any invertebrates into some activity. So I'll crack on with this and we'll see if we can turn anything up. I'll try and hold this steady, but we've got a false scorpion. Just there. In the middle of the screen. I'm chuffed with this. I think this is more or less the first false scorpion that I've seen in leaf litter. And I've done a lot of leaf litter sampling, mainly through the winter months. If I did lots during the summer months, I'd probably find more. And I think now we'll dig it out and have a look at it and see what it is. Now then, look what's fallen out of the leaf litter. 
And this is a false scorpion. It may well become active in a minute and will probably go backwards. It usually does. These are fantastic little creatures. I love these and they're becoming very popular. This particular species is Neobisium carcinoides and it's the first time I've seen this species. I've seen quite a few others, but mostly those that dwell under bark. A few others though that like this one live in a leaf litter habitat. We're looking nearly three millimetres in length and its head end is the one looking down at about a seven o'clock angle on your screen but it'll probably zoom off at a two o'clock angle. These are incredibly nimble little beasties and able to pretty much go in any direction equally as fast. Here we go. Just stretching out one of two pincers. They are extremely scorpion-like, identical to scorpions really. All that's missing is the scorpion's tail and the sting. But say these are only small, the largest in the UK, which is Dendrocernes cyaneus, is the largest of the lot and weighs in at a whopping nearly five millimetres if I remember right, but I've not seen that one yet, despite much lifting of bark. And these are terrific little predators of the forest floor and when they're the leaf litter. There we go. He always seems to like to go backwards and I'm going to have a job here to keep up with him. The only thing I can put the movement back at movement to is a movement away from the light. The lighting here being in the top of your screen. And now we're moving in the right direction. This is a fairly widespread species in Nottingshire and indeed it is generally regarded as being the commonest species of pseudoscorpion in the UK. However, it's took many, many years for me to see one. When I worked at the Arboretum Park in Nottingham many years ago in the 1980s, we used to have four scorpions in an old leaf mould stack. It was many years old, it was up against a stone wall. And we used to get four scorpions in it. In fact, indeed, that was where I first saw these. And I'm thinking that this was the species, you know, the species involved. I can't remember. It was a long time before I got into invertebrates. But these are just remarkable little things, completely harmless. They're just marvellous and are becoming very popular now. And it's one of the good aspects of social media like Facebook. Facebook, for all its many faults, has allowed many other people to become interested in those lesser known invertebrates like false scorpions. 
harvest moon and many others. It's common in Nottinghamshire, but has a patchy distribution. And its distribution is generally in those areas where invertebrate studies have taken place or where those people who record arachnids fairly regular live and study. Now it's coming up the side of the tree here, where I lose the focus. But there we are. So I'll see what other footage I can drop in. It'll be about as good as this, so don't get your hopes up. So this is Nibisium carcinoides. It does have a common name, but the common names tend to be pretty crap, really, in regards to false scorpions. It's just as easy. It's just as easy to learn the scientific name as it is the common name of these. But these are fabulous little things.